pass me by. Sometimes you look my way and say my name and I turn around. I wish that I could listen to the voice inside me, a voice that always said. 13 pounds in one week is awesome. And I'm really excited. That's a great number for some weight loss. I will say the whole concept of weighing in each week in front of the world was not something I contemplated until after I'd sort of committed to it and already put that number out there. And then I was like, well, might as well just follow the whole journey. But I don't think I thought through the self-doubt that creeps up from doing that. Let's go have some coffee with Ricky on the porch. You learn things about yourself when you vlog that you didn't think you'd learn. I take my pants off when I weigh myself. That's different. Good morning. Hi, Chuck. Thank you. It's nice of you. Self-doubt creeps in when we least expect it and when it's usually pretty inconvenient. But when I think through self-doubt and I think through the last few times that I was really just suffering badly from questioning myself was back when I was first diagnosed and I was looking around online for answers. And when you do that, some scary things can happen. Self-doubt creeps into all of us, no matter whether we're putting content out online or whether we're just living our lives online. Again, when I was thinking back to the last time I really had self-doubt when it came to my disease and I was wondering what was going on was actually before I was officially diagnosed. We thought I had Crohn's, we were pretty sure that's what it was, but I was waiting on a colonoscopy to confirm. And during that period, I remember thinking to myself, I have to find the answers. I turned to the one place most of us turn to, the scariest place. I went online. And when I say the scariest place, I'm not trying to make the internet sound like awful. I'm more or less talking about how scary it can be, the misinformation that is shared online. And then the moment you watch one video that has misinformation in it, suddenly the algorithm inundates you with at least one or two a week. What I'm talking about specifically are some of these ridiculous videos of people talking about how they are cured of their disease. I mean, they're highly sus in the first place. I digress. I find that it does, it isn't just those of us creating content. So these trolls jump in the comments of some of my friends who are just talking about their life and how their illness is impacting them and say some of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard in my life and say it with their full chest. And when people do that, it creates a space for self-doubt. It creates a space for us to allow those feelings to bubble up and then you start going to possibly unreliable resources or you ask yourself, well, if it worked for them, could it maybe work for me? Donuts not for you, Chunk. Sorry. You're not getting any donuts. Sit down. No, ma'am. No donuts for you. No donuts. No, ma'am. Sorry about you. Yeah, well, huff and puff about it, but no, ma'am. I am by no means saying that I think all of the information that people get on the internet is dangerous. Hello, I do content online about my disease. What I guess I'm saying is you'll never hear me say things like cure. And I certainly won't tell people what their experiences will be for changes to their lifestyle, their medications, their treatment plan. I just, I would never insert myself into those assumptions because A, I don't have the training, B, I don't know the people, and C, it's different. Autoimmune disease presents differently in all of us. It's not the same in any two patients, including Crohn's disease. It can be vastly different, the experience from one patient to another. The assumption that somehow making the change you made is going to give someone else the same outcome in and of itself is absolutely flawed. So what do we do? When you see it happening, say something, like step in and tell the person, like, who, you know, who do you think you are? Gotta wait for him to open, Chunk. I know, they gotta open, we gotta hold tight, and then we'll go to see Abby. Yes, yes. This week, the algorithm served me a ridiculous video that had Cure Crohn's right there in the title. And of course I was, I, I had to, cause I had to see what this nonsense tomfoolery was all about. Sure enough, it was both. <laughs>
I watched this video and I'm reminded of how vulnerable new people to IBD or any chronic illness of any kind are in the early stages of being diagnosed. You've gone through a long period of time where you've been very ill. No one has had any answers for why you've been sick and everything they've tried has not worked up to that point. So, I mean, I know people out there that, it has not, that have not gone through it don't quite understand, but that is the struggle. The struggle is multi-layered. It's not just physical, it's emotional. It's as much much about the fact that you've had to keep telling people there's something wrong with you when they keep telling you there isn't and that is in and of itself exhausting. When you finally get to the place where you're getting some answers, it is a time where people can swoop in and unfortunately there's a lot of folks out there who are willing to say and do some horrible things that can really have some dangerous negative impacts on the patient. All right, let's drop this girl and get to the salon for my spa day. One of my very best friends, Morgan Lee, she's an author tuber, but also has Crohn's disease. And Morgan and I have shared our stories. They're eerily similar. However, there's one big, big difference. The major difference is that Morgan, at one point, went off of her medication for a period of time. And when I asked her about this, like, why would you do that? Why would you quit, quit your medication? There was a religious element. It's terrifying, and it seriously, you guys, could have killed her. I'm really passionate about this whole notion that people who are wholly unqualified and who know nothing about your individual circumstance might be out there trying to influence your medical decisions. And I want you, the patient, especially if there's self-doubt creeping in, especially if you're new to the disease, think through, is this person, do they have my best interests at heart? Or are they trying to use me to catch some algorithm wave for the word cure with a chronic illness? Because nothing says clickbait like someone curing a chronic illness with vegetables and hope. Let's get dressed and get my hair cut. The self-doubt is what creates the space where you can seek out answers that may not be good ones. For those of us in this niche, the ones I watch at least, and for me, Self-doubt is always something I have to overcome in a few ways and try a few different strategies to get to the right place. Number one, center myself. What does that look like for me? I'm gonna find that book that always helps me find my center and my why. Why am I here? Why am I doing this? And that book is... this little beauty right here, Big Magic, Elizabeth Gilbert. It's always helped me remember I'm a creative. I love to create things. I love to make things. I love to write things. I, I love to tell a story, whether it be visually or written. This has always helped me kind of remember my why. When I was going through any space of self-doubt, whether it is early in my disease when I'm not sure where I should be turning to for good information and, and support, I think I always had to lean into my ways of dealing, and one of them is reading something like this. So I committed myself this weekend to read this one and remember my why, and I think I found it again. I think I did. I wanted to bring up these sort of snake oil sales salesmen that might try to come in and convince you that you either need to buy something or try something that may have worked for them. I highly encourage you to not listen to that. Stay away from that. My friend Morgan Lee, who I was visiting about earlier, who got really, really sick when she stopped her care due to some religious pressures, check out that podcast. In that, we get into the religious discussion and how it impacted her health care. And that's a really scary thing, right? And it doesn't just have to be religion. I guess that's my point. There's that vulnerable moment where you're susceptible to it. And she would tell you that, I would tell you that, any of us who've been there would tell you that. I'm encouraging you to really find your center when that self-doubt starts. Find a book that gives you some positive vibes or helps you remember your why. And then go to your people that help you remember your why, like I'm gonna do today. And then beyond that, remember that once you figure out what it is that makes you passionate, that makes you love the thing that you love, hold on to it and don't let anyone else's ideas about that thing impact yours because you matter and your opinions are absolutely as valuable as theirs. Remember that always. Remember. Remember. 